I'm going to share some secrets with you today that if you understand what I am saying Happy birthday to you and I thank God for you thank God for everything is taking you through this year and I thank God for the victory he has in store for you God bless you Bless you Are we there Ephesians 5 18 Yes sir 20. Yes sir thank can you. you see the screen do you need me to change it to New King James version or we see use the New American standard This is by... fine this is fine that's fine This is fine And do not get drunk with wine in which there is debauchery but be filled with the spirit from verse 19 is my emphasis speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody with your heart to the lord always giving thanks for all In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to our God and Father I want to explain something very dynamic the protocol of thanksgiving Give me or let the scripture open Victoria give me Hebrews 13 verse 15 Hebrews 13 verse 15 Is there a person admitting people into the room Whoever should be doing that should please help out with that Hebrews 13 verse number 15 that is the second scripture i want to look at the first scripture says be filled with the spirit speaking to one another first of all it tells you do not be drunk with wine but be filled with the spirit when somebody is intoxicated you can be intoxicated with two things wine that leads to debauchery or the spirit of god and when you are filled with the spirit of god this scripture is saying that it will lead you not into debauchery it will be speaking to one another what will happen is the overflow in you will begin to express psalms hymns spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart with your heart you make the melody like a person can make soup and make fried rice you make it that you have all the ingredients inside of your heart and as you begin to express thanks thanksgiving what you are doing you are making melody with your heart to the lord now the protocol is simple as identified in the first scripture always giving thanks when you begin to make this melody it could be just regular tongue tongues or or you actually singing or you actually saying in words of english or in language whatever it is you're doing when you begin to express thanksgiving it says here the direction given you give thanks for all things in the name of our lord jesus christ and you do it to our god and father verse number 2 second number 2 rather hebrews 13 verse 15 hebrews 13 verse 15 thank you victoria hmm. it says through him then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to god that is the fruit of lips praising his name when he says to god this is to the father 
Another translation says, through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. The fruit of lips that openly profess his name. I want you to follow me very carefully. If you must thank God, I want you to know how to do it properly. Through Jesus, let us offer to God a sacrifice of praise. And this sacrifice of praise, the Bible calls it the fruit of your lips. The fruit of your lips. So your lips in the spirit looks like a tree. And that tree can generate fruits. It can produce fruits. And we know, as I've explained in the past, it is the mature trees that produce fruits. One of the demonstrations of Christian maturity is when you begin to produce the fruits of your lips called praise. And this praise, the Bible said they should openly profess his name. It should openly profess. You're not doing it in secret. There are many things that the Bible talks about. You do it. Don't do this in public. Do this in secret. When you fast, for instance, don't be like the Pharisees. When you give, don't be like these people. Even prayer. We are given directives in scriptures. But the one place where we are told or instructed to profess openly in the public places to one another is when it pertains the fruit of your lips called praise. But as important as that sounds, that's not what I want to point out in these two scriptures. I want to extract for you the protocol of thanksgiving. Going by these two scriptures, the protocol is very simple. Number one, to thank God properly, you do it in the name of Jesus. You do it in the name of Jesus. Number two, thanksgiving must be directed to a member of the Godhead called the God the Father. He is the reaper of your thanksgiving. You do it through the Son. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. When you are filled, it should lead to drunkenness in the spirit which in this instance begins to be psalms you're you're speaking to one another in psalms hymns spiritual songs singing and making melody with your hearts unlike the unbelievers when they get drunk something else happens this one is you are filled with the spirit by virtue of that begin to sing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. You begin to make melody with your hearts to the Lord. And then that melody, the Bible says you do it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As you weave your heart into words, what should be at the back of your head or your mind is that you are doing this through the Lord Jesus Christ and in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the Holy Spirit has done his part. The protocol of entrance into his gates with thanksgiving is through the name of Jesus. But the reaper, the benefactor of thanksgiving is the Father. The Father. That is the protocol of thanksgiving. In Second Corinthians 9, verse 15. 
the Apostle Paul begins to explain something. This man says, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Another translation says, thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. There are gifts that words cannot possibly quantify. The reason why it is indescribable and why it is unspeakable is because you don't even know about it in the first place. You were meant to go out on Monday. On that particular day, the devil had set a trap, an accident waiting for you on the freeway. But because you were wise and you heard this sermon, you thanked the Lord on Sunday night. And so, without your knowledge, God dispatched an angel to fight that battle. And you just drove as if it was regular day for you, not even knowing the battles that were fought on your behalf. This is what we are talking when we talk about the indescribable gift of God. Gifts that you can't begin to quantify with words. Give me Psalm 103, verse 1 to 4. Let's look at a classic example of a psalm in the Bible directed towards thanksgiving. Psalm 103, verse 1 to 4. There are certain psalms that help you proceed in thanksgiving. And by the time you soak in those psalms, what begins to happen is that the Spirit of God begins to indwell you and fill you. If he was resting in your boat, like Jesus slept in the boat of the disciples and a storm came, he would wake up. When he wakes up, as you begin to dwell in that psalm and express that psalm to God, it would be like you are drunk. Then the fruits of your lips will begin to come out. Hmm. And then you can write your own psalm. It is called ministering unto God, in case you're wondering. Do we have that scripture yet, Victoria? Psalm 103. What I'm still saying is Hebrews 13, Psalm 103, verse 1 to 4. To save us time, let me start. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Then it says, who forgives all your sins? and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. I'm not sure why Victoria's screen is stuck. Let me explain. You see, man is three in one, body, soul, and spirit. Each of these three facets of man are what is used in expressing thanksgiving. I've taught us your spirit is linked to your heart. The incense flows from the altar of your heart. It is expressed through your mouth, by your will. You drive that agenda with your will, which is a component of your soul. It is your mouth being open and closing your body that is now doing the job that was originated from your heart. Hmm. 
So thankfulness is primarily generated from the heart, expressed through the soul, analyzed by the mouth. The soul consists of your will, emotions, conscience, mind, and your intellect. Thankfulness, did you know thankfulness is a proof of love generated from the soul of the man? Victoria, are you able to give me Luke 10 27? So, should I change this one or open another platform? We're not even seeing the one that you did last, the Psalm 1. I'm still seeing Hebrews 13. So keep those scriptures open. Give me Luke 10, 27. I believe it's Luke 10, 27. When Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart. Are you there? Almost, sir. All right. Can you see it, sir? Yes, yes. Thank you. And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. That's the heart is linked to your spirit. With all your soul, obviously your soul, and with all your strength. This is physical strength. And with all your mind. Your mind is still linked to your soul and your neighbor as yourself. So thanksgiving is the proof of your love for God. It is the proof of your love. You want to profess love to God like you profess love to your spouse or you profess love to a boyfriend or girlfriend or fiance. It is not done merely by writing love letters or going to the movies or having dinner. The way the Spirit of God takes his thanksgiving hmm. the way you show proof of your love for him is when you begin to thank him. This is what equates dating. And then God begins to fight for you. The Bible says, thanks be to God who has not given us as prey to their teeth. The fact that when the prey comes, when the enemy comes, as we know, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. In all three circumstances, there's no iota of love in there for you. He wants to make you a prey. Listen to me. Many of us don't understand what it means for something to be a sacrifice. Talk less of that thing being a sacrifice of thanksgiving. What we are doing today at Entrepreneurs in Christ, a 10 hour prayer marathon, not asking God for anything is a sacrifice. First of all, when you begin to pray, your five minutes prayers won't cut it. 30 minutes prayers won't cut it. An hour prayer may not even cut it, depending on the shape and the size of your spirit. David said, I won't give to God what cost me nothing. That's why we begin to express ourselves in lengthy prayers. Because for it to be a sacrifice in the realm of the spirit, when they weigh it, it would have cost you something. It would have cost you something. Sometimes I look at my wife. And she spent almost all night praying. Hmm. 
that sacrifice of your sleep is what translates in the realm of the spirit. That's where it can now be said that it's a sacrifice indeed. When we were busy Christians, we would just pray five minutes prayers and we'll call it a day and we will go our way and all of that. There is no sacrifice anywhere. There's nothing. You look, take your church mind and think about it. We watch some of these Nollywood movies, Ghana movies, I'm sure they have the same movies in Kenya. And you see what people in the kingdom of darkness need to do to achieve certain results. Sometimes you would hear that somebody had to go sleep in a graveyard or they will carry a calabash on their head by the streams at, in the middle of the night. Have you ever wondered why it would always be a weird circumstance? That's because the language spirits speak, just like you speak Kiswahili and I speak Yoruba and you speak to in Ghana. The language they speak in their realm is the language of sacrifice. A spirit does not understand you until you've learned to sacrifice. What makes you think that those Nollywood movies that show the extent that they do in real life what makes you think it's any difference in the kingdom of life because sacrifice is sacrifice if you're going to worship a king spirit like god i hope you know something must cost you david understood this he said i will not give to god what costs me nothing You're passing the offering plates around and you squeeze five dollars and drop drop it in there. But you go spend ten dollars on a burger in two hours. Some of us love convenience. The convenience of Christianity. So when we say the sacrifice of thanksgiving, what we are in fact saying is this, something costs you because sacrifice is giving up something of value. Like my wife will give up her sleep to pray in exchange for something of a higher value. So you are giving up your time to thank God question what do you get back in return the simplest definition of sacrifice the reason why you would see those people in the nollywood movies go to the streams and do all kinds of nonsense they are giving up something of value their convenience in exchange for the hope of a higher value Because thanksgiving is simply defined as giving thanks. There's no bogus terms. It's just giving thanks to the Lord. But how you express it is up to you. Let me explain a few things that you get back when you begin to give thanks unto God. Number one, thanksgiving, the sacrifice of thanksgiving leads to divine increase and multiplication. 
divine includes. In Acts 2 verse 47, if you can give me that scripture, Victoria, can you put it up there? Acts 2.47. Acts 2.47. When we go through the protocol of thanksgiving, we offer the fruits of our lips. There's an inconvenience, the time we could have spent making money, the time we could have spent doing business here, the time we could have spent sleeping at night. When we insert that as the language, the weight of sacrifice, and the Spirit of God looks at it like incense arising from the altar of your heart. What he releases, there are a few things you should know about. All right. The Bible says, praising God and having favor with all the people. Give it to me from verse 46 to 47. So the disciples were praising God. That's thanksgiving. Uh Uh-oh. Praising God. And having favor with all the people. Praising God. And having favor. Praising God. Thank you. Day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple. And breaking bread from house to house. They were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart. Verse 47. So they were dwelling in one union and praising God. Praising God birthed favor with all the people. And the scriptures say the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were being saved. They were praising God. As that incense was going on, God was releasing favor. And as that favor was coming, they were adding, to, it was adding to them the incense of thanksgiving. What God responded with was favor with all the people. And the Bible says, the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Listen to me. Thanksgiving is a technology that ensures your increase and your impact. Many Christians pray, I've realized, but many Christians don't thank God enough. And may I tell you that things even can be done as praise. It can be done as worship. It can be done as prayers like we just did. In all three ways, it is a sacrifice. When you begin to praise God for long, like we are doing on this 10-hour prayer marathon, Perhaps you have a business. You are a kingdom entrepreneur. You have a business. And you don't quite understand why the spirit of stagnation has held you down. Hmm. Maybe you are experiencing delay in one area or another. For somebody else, it may be the spirit of retrogression. Listen to me. There are certain secrets in the Bible, kingdom secrets, that make for the advantage of a believer. Praising God. Praising God. Praising God. Praising God. And what happened was they had favor. And then the Lord began to add. Listen to me. If you want to break free from the hold of stagnation. 
it's a stronghold something that has held you down a pit that you found yourself in when you make up your mind that you've had enough of it what you need to do is to praise god you will now find out that god will begin to increase you add to you you'll be adding you'll be adding you'll be adding if it's business you'll have more business If it's customers, you have more customers. Because what they did in the early church is what you should be doing now. God having favor with all the people, the Lord added to the church daily. He was adding to them. He was adding to them. He was, they were just kept on adding to them. Another example you can look for this. Give me John 6:11 quickly. John 6:11. John 6:11. I want to make sure that we get this point properly. A, a a a a secret a kingdom secret to ensure increase in your business, increase in your life. Multiplication, divine increase. People won't understand how you are doing what you are doing. Thanksgiving secret. Do you have that scripture yet? Yes, sir, we do. Is it not showing at your end? Hmm. I can't see it. I don't know why. It's okay. The Bible says Jesus lifted up his hand. and thank the father don't forget the protocol it is directed to god the father your thanksgiving yes i can see it now jesus then took the the loaves and after giving thanks he distributed them to those who were rec- reclining Give it to me in New King James. Likewise also of the fish as much as they wanted. Jesus lifted up his hands. He thanked the Father. Then he gave them the bread and as they broke it, that bread began to multiply in their hands. Yeah. Jesus took the loaves, loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples gave it to those sitting down and likewise of the fish as much as they wanted many of us know how this miracle happened five loaves two fishes but what we haven't studied is the technology that was employed one translation i don't know what particular one if it's the one in matthew or mark or do says that as he was as they were as they broke the bread it was multiplying or increasing in their hands when you thank god and you spend time thanking god directed at the father through the son as a result of your overflow through the holy spirit increase and multiplication is what begins to happen and so the more you give thanks the more the grace for multiplication is released when you give thanks my people you will provoke a dimension in the kingdom that causes for divine increase regardless of any spirit of stagnation delay or retrogression perhaps you are a young woman on this altar and you are waiting for your spouse to come I want to challenge you to become an expert in giving thanks. Maybe for you you need to see multiplication as being a mother or a father. You don't have kids. The same way Jesus did it is how you will do it. The Bible says praising God
as they gave thanks to the Father, that thing in their hands began to increase. It began to multiply. You want to open more businesses? You want the oil of serial entrepreneurship? Begin to praise God. You want to be financially buoyant? Begin to praise God. It is a secret of multiplication that makes for the advantage and the victory of the believer in this world. There's a popular scripture in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 30 verse 19. Give me that scripture. Jeremiah 30 verse 19. New King James would be fine. Yeah. Jeremiah 30, verse 19. Then out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, hmm. and the voice of those who make merry. I will multiply them, and they shall not diminish. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. I'll say it again. Then out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of those who make merry. I, says the Lord, will multiply them and they shall not diminish. If you want to stop leakage in your finances, leakage in your business, you need for a greater force to begin to push back that spirit. And for that force to begin to release multiplication, it is done by virtue of thanksgiving. God says, I will multiply them. They shall not diminish. I will glorify them. They shall not be small. Number two, thanksgiving is a weapon, a weapon of war. Give me 2 Chronicles 20, verse 20. Thanksgiving is a weapon. When you begin to thank God, I want you to have full understanding of why you are doing what you are doing and to ensure that it is indeed a sacrifice, something that cost you something. You give up something of value in exchange for something of a higher value. Thank you. The Bible says, and so they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. Go to the next verse. The next, give it to me till verse 22. What was happening here? They were about to go into battle. Hmm. They were about to go into battle. God said to them, believe in the prophets, so shall you be established, so shall you prosper. And the directive came, I'm not sure what's happening with Victoria's computer, but the directive came. He said, get singers and minstrels. Put these singers and minstrels in the front of the army. All right. So the Bible says, O Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established, believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord, and who should praise the beauty of holiness. Goodness. 
as they went out before the army they were saying praise the lord for his mercy endures forever very simple song they were just singing and they were saying it praise the lord for his mercy endures forever 22 says now when they began to sing and to praise what did the lord do he set ambushes against the people of ammon moab and mount seir who had come against judah and they were defeated if you read that story what happened was they began to kill themselves they began to kill themselves they did not even have to fight all they did was praise and as they were praising what they were saying was very simple praise the lord for his mercy endures forever when you begin to praise god you are in fact beckoning on his mercy and what god will do by virtue of his mercy he will dispatch an angel you activate angelic warriors when you dance sing and shout when you dance before god when you sing before god you activate the ministry of angelic warriors it becomes a weapon of warfare so that you don't even have to fight god then takes on your battle listen to me when you have done everything that you know how to do you are going through a season of warfare you are fasted you have prayed your consecration is strong you have given seed <clears throat> it's time for you to drop everything and switch to thanksgiving when everything else fails it's time for you to drop and switch to thanksgiving these are kingdom secrets The Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 30 by faith remember I was saying thanksgiving is linked to faith by faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about for 7 days with thanksgiving and praise by faith the walls of Jericho fell down that thing that looked impenetrable that looked like it was defeating you the walls will fall down when you become a master of praise and thanksgiving and the secret attached to that one is seven days you can do it for seven days of midnight praise midnight thanksgiving that thing that has become a stumbling block before you fall and crumble let me take one more so we can pray a bit before i have to get your counseling call <clears throat> number 3 there is a very unique grace called the grace for attraction the grace for attraction is a grace that some people walk in in God's kingdom it's not a cheap or common grace But that grace I have found in my sojourn it is packed with thanksgiving. As you praise and worship God, things begin to be attracted to you. You become like a magnet. Or I'll give you some personal examples, but let me run. Number 4. thanksgiving to become full we are very familiar with the story of the 10 lepers those 10 lepers they got healed but not all of them were whole leprosy is a disease that parts of your body look like they are out 
of, of place. And I'll just summarize the, or let me just read it very briefly. Luke 17, 11 to 19. From verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, the Bible says he turned back and with a loud voice he glorified God the Father. And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God except the stranger. And he said to him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. So only 10% of people come back to give glory to God like we are doing today. And what God did for this man is there was a wholeness. There was a wholesomeness that was released to him because he came and gave God thanks. Now, you may not be a leper. When the Bible says he was made whole, there are so many connotations of what that scripture means. Perhaps your own is that you are single and trusting God for the right partner in your life. For this cause, shall a man leave his mother and father and cling to his, to his wife? And the two of them shall become one. That is when they become whole. If you meet me today and I am not with my wife, it is fair to say you met half of me. I'm not whole. But when you meet both of us together, we are whole. We are whole. My wife is on this call. It can be said the whole of me is on this call. When you thank God, for what he has done for you thus far. Wholeness also signifies the right person coming into your life that will complete you. I don't have time. I want us to take some prayer points. So let me run. Number five. When everything else fails, thanksgiving. When everything else fails, thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is one of the highest demonstrations of your faith. Hebrews 11, 32 to 35. The Bible says, what more shall I say? Give me that scripture. Hebrews 11, 32 to 35, very quickly. Hebrews 11, 32 to 35. The protocol of thanksgiving and the benefits of thanksgiving. Hebrews 11, 32 to 35. Hmm. I thought about this subject yesterday extensively. If you missed that teaching, go on our YouTube page, find it, listen to it. It's on faith. The entire chapter talks about faith because faith is linked with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is an act of faith. It's one of the strongest acts of your faith perhaps you've had a dream and you wake up from that dream the first thing you should do before you even declare that dream to come to pass is to thank God for making it possible in the spirit all right I read and what more shall I say For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith, this is one of the elements we looked at, through faith. How did they subdue kingdoms? Through faith. How did they walk righteousness? Through faith. How did they obtain promises? Through faith. How did they stop the mouths of lions? Through faith. How did they quench the violence of fire? Through faith. How did they escape the edge of the sword? Through faith. 
how were they made strong out of weakness through faith how did they become valiant in battle through faith how did they turn to fight the armies of the aliens through faith how did the women receive their dead raised back to life through faith listen to me when everything else fails and that business is dead that marriage is dead that aspiration that goal that relationship is dead it's time to turn to thanksgiving a demonstration of your faith a few months ago i had dinner with my spiritual mentor in Atlanta and he gave me a very interesting story there was a woman who was a pastor who, whose husband was a pastor rather in Nigeria certain things happened and the man passed away the man died it came to pass that there was a very very popular crusade that was going to hold in Nigeria the man had been dead for about 72 hours his body was in the mortuary and this woman began to pray she prayed and prayed and prayed this man is too young to die this cannot happen this cannot be our testimony after serving you for so long then she did something very strange she withdrew his body from the mortuary and she took this man to the crusade ground hmm. and while they were praising god she began to praise God. She stopped her prayers and she began to praise God. And then she began to mention a particular verse in Hebrews 11. That verse 35 says, "Who men received their dead raised back to life. Women received their dead raised back to life." And as she was saying that, she was thanking God. She was praising God. She was dancing. All of a sudden, the man sneezed and woke up and came out of the dead on the crusade ground. Recorded life story, testimony. When everything else fails, Thanksgiving. When all hope is lost, Thanksgiving. they did it through faith listen to me when you are going through faith there is always a test of faith that will face you perhaps you feel drained emotionally you feel drained psychologically you feel drained spiritually when i began to go deep into god and i'll pray for people I began to realize that the next few days I would feel so emotionally drained, spiritually, I won't be able to focus at work or do anything. Drained. My spiritual father explained that I was emptying out all the virtue I was building. That was the result of that. But there was something called the replenishing anointing that comes to fill you back in. And so when I feel that way back then, I would just begin to thank God. I will surround myself with songs of thanksgiving, just praising God, worshiping God. And I'll be muttering tongues, muttering words of thanksgiving and strength to begin to come back into my spirit 
That is the secret, my friend. Each time you minister to somebody, you pray for somebody, you lay your hands, or you dispense virtue, become an expert in thanksgiving. That same night, thank God, you would see how strength will be released back to you. You have gone through faith. So now I want us to take a few prayer points so that we can put the knowledge we've learned today to work. Psalm 118, verse 24. The Bible says, This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So I want us to unmute, begin to rejoice in this day, begin to be glad on this day. On mute, begin to rejoice, begin to be glad. Just start expressing your thanksgiving, expressing your praise, expressing your worship, your sacrifice of praise. Begin to unmute and say that. Lepradon Tarabasi Tikembre Doshi Karaparas Tembre Dente. Ilabin Telebus Katambra Don Teles Ketembre Dan Tarabasti. She Paraparan Tembre de Ketembre Dos Cotombra Dos Cotombra Dante. Zida Tanta do Sepres Ketembre Dante. Malabon Telkeda. This is the day. 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 The day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. This is the day. This is the day. I will rejoice. I will. I will. I will drive the agenda of my will. I will rejoice. I will be glad. I will rejoice. I will be glad. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will be I want us to become very intentional, like a laser guided missile. Isaiah 20, 12, rather, verse 4 to 5. And on that day, you will say, Give thanks to the Lord, hmm. call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, make them remember that his name is exalted. Praise the Lord in song, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Listen to me. Right now, everybody will take their own song. But what you're singing for or about to thank God is for a very specific thing he did out of everything else that happened this year. A very specific thing. You will look inward. You will find that thing that would have crushed you, crushed your business. You would isolate that thing and you would sing to God to declare his praises amongst the people. You can yeah, sing. Yeah. Let's begin to do oh. that. Let's begin to do that. Ni <laughs> <laughs> 
in Jesus name Amen. James 1 verse 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above. Comes down from the Father of the heavenly lights. Who does not change like shifting shadows? Every good and perfect gift. Listen to me. There are good gifts. There are perfect gifts. The Bible says, a man can receive nothing, whether good or perfect, except it is given him from above. Good gifts. Perfect gifts. Good gifts. Perfect gifts. They're going to thank him for good gifts that you received this year, both from oh. people and from God. And then you will thank him for perfect gifts that you received. A good gift is somebody giving you a ride to the office. It's a good gift. A perfect gift is somebody giving you a car. There are different names and there are good gifts and there are perfect gifts. You're going to look at your life and see which ones are good gifts, which ones are perfect gifts. And you're going to open your mouth, the fruits of your lips, and express thanksgiving to God because of his gifts. Can we do that? Thanking God for his gifts. Let's thank God for his gifts. Let's thank God for good gifts. Let's thank God for perfect gifts. Thank you for good gifts. Thank Please, if there is noise, mute your end. If there is noise, mute your end. Perfect gifts. Victoria, move my counseling schedules for 10 minutes out. Many yes, years sir. ago, many years ago, I was diagnosed with pneumonia in both of my lungs. And um, I was hospitalized. This is over 10 years ago now. And they had to connect a very weird machine that was breathing for me while they cleared my lungs. 
I don't know what that machine is called. And they induced me into a coma. So that they could clear my lungs. I kept on pulling the, the pipes out of my nose. The gift of life, I want you to know that you can breathe without a machine helping you. It is a perfect gift. It's a perfect gift. And many of us take it for granted. You just need to take a walk down the nearest hospital close to you. And then you realize that you don't take some things for granted. All right, let me take one or two more prayer points. Hebrews 12, 28. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be moved, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. Why? For our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. I don't have the time to explain that statement. But you're going to thank him for being a consuming fire, protective of our families and our loved ones through 2022. You're going to thank him for being a consuming fire. A consuming fire is not just fire that burns in one location. This one can move around. And before it grabs you, the fire grabs it. Our God is a consuming fire. This is why we thank Him. We thank Him with praises. Because our God is a consuming fire. Can you unmute and just thank Him for His consuming fire around your family, around your children, around your business, around your life, around your spouse, around your parents, around everything around you. Our God is a consuming fire. We thank you, O God, you are a consuming fire. You are a consuming fire. You are a you are a consuming fire. You are a consuming fire. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Consuming fire. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I will just take one last prayer point and then I will start my counseling sessions. Our God is a con. Listen to me. What the devil meant for evil, God turned for good. Fire melts. Mm. Mm. It changes the figure of things. And that fire can consume you. But this one works for you. Despite our imperfections, our God is a consuming fire. 
In Psalm 95, verse 1 to 5. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. So you mean that there are different gods that the Bible acknowledges? But our own God, he is the great king above all those gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. That tells you how massive and big God is. If his hand formed everywhere your car you drive your car to his hand from it we're going to thank him for his majestic wisdom in creation and then i'll hand over to whoever is meant to be leading at this point point we're going to thank him for his majestic wisdom in creation thank him for that the things that you take for granted every day thank him for that for his majestic wisdom his majestic wisdom in creation. Let's begin to thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for your majestic wisdom. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you Thank you and so father i present your people to you we've come with a sacrifice of praise a sacrifice of worship yes. and our sacrifice mm-hmm. of thanksgiving yes. thank you for birthdays yes. thank you for families thank you for growth for addition thank you for wisdom thank you for your consuming fire that fights ferociously for us oh thank you thank you lord for the majestic wonders you've done for us this year thank you for protecting us against the enemy thank you because the enemy will not swallow us with his teeth we were not given us prey to him thank you for the things that we don't even understand is happening but still we thank you 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 and i come as a priest of this altar and i present your people to you for thanksgiving i ask father that you smile down on us and accept this sacrifice of thanksgiving thank you lord Thank you, Father. We love you. We honor you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you. Jesus. Thank you, Father, for saving us. Accept our praises and our worship. And as many as will continue this Thanksgiving in their homes till the end of this year, I ask that you incline your ears, O oh God, unto your cries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let the angels that carry the incense of thanksgiving be released as we thank you from the depths of our hearts. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen.